Hey everyone, and welcome to this update on one of our previous videos about reverse osmosis systems in general and the water drop A1 in particular, potentially leaching harmful chemicals into the water they are supposed to purify. So today I'm gonna to bring you up to date on the current water drop A1 situation, including everything we've learned being in close contact with water drop for the last few months, even getting insights into the lab testing they've conducted on the very same A1 unit that we used and a new and updated version of the A1. So we'll also discuss what we think about this new and updated water drop A1 model being back on the market. And finally, we've tested more than three dozen other reverse osmosis systems and similar types of water filters for chemical leaching in the meantime. And we're eager to share those results with you. So let's go. Okay, let's start with a brief overview of what happened so far. So Waterdrop had reached out to us a while ago and asked if we could review their A1 countertop reverse osmosis system, meaning the old version of it. And we said yes, but we not only tested the system for some hands-on experience, we also conducted a lab analysis of a before and an after water sample because we wanted to find out how effective the Waterdrop A1 RO system really is at removing contaminants. We used test kits from ETR Labs to do a professional analysis of the two samples. And once the lab reports were in, we could tell that the water drop A1 had done a solid job reducing most undesirable impurities. However, the lab reports also showed elevated levels of methylene chloride, AKA dichloromethane, and xylenes in the filtered water that hadn't been detected in the unfiltered water. Now, dichloromethane was found at 11.87 parts per billion, which is way more than the strictest health guideline we could find at four parts per billion, and even double the EPA's legal limit for public water supplies at five parts per billion. And xylenes were detected at 0.71 ppb, which is way below the strictest health guideline of 500 ppb, and the EPA's legal limit of 10,000. PPB. Now, dichloromethane and xylenes are volatile chemicals, and the EPA has started regulating them because, and I reference the EPA's official website here, some people who drink water containing dichloromethane in excess of the legal limit over many years could have liver problems and may have an increased risk of getting cancer. And some people who drink water containing xylenes in excess of the legal limit over many years could experience damage to their nervous system. Now, naturally, we found this pretty alarming. So we repeated the lab testing to make sure that our findings were accurate. And the second lab report, also listed dichloromethane, but at a slightly lower concentration, and xylenes were not detected. Next, we did some research and found that Derek from Modern Castle here on YouTube had also done a lab analysis of the old version of the water drop A1, and he had also found dichloromethane in his filtered water at an even higher level than we did. And then we found a study that says that RO membrane manufacturing processes involve various volatile chemicals, including dichloromethane and xylenes, in order to increase membrane performance, and that these chemicals can be left behind in dangerously high concentrations in RO membranes after manufacturing, even leaching into the water they are supposed to purify. Of course, we reached out to Waterdrop about our findings and our contact at the company said that after several running cycles, the A1 uses a disinfectant solution in order to clean itself and that's where the chemical leaching came from. We weren't really convinced by this explanation back then and We've learned a lot since, and that's what I'll share with you now. So as mentioned in the beginning, we've been in close contact with Waterdrop about their old A1 version leaching chemicals. Now, in fact, they saw our video and someone from Waterdrop, not our previous contact, reached out to us saying that our video had raised significant concern within their company and that they had decided to withdraw the A1 from all channels for the time being and that their R&D and product departments would conduct additional testing, and they did. First of all, Waterdrop asked us to return the A1 unit we used because they wanted to test it themselves. So we did, and they tested it using TAPSCORE, which is a water testing service similar to the service we used. And plus, Waterdrop did some additional testing using SGS, which is a multinational company that tests products for material safety, among other things. Okay, so the TAPSCORE report, which Waterdrop kindly sent us and which you're seeing now, confirmed our A1 unit. Remember that this is the old version, leaching dichloromethane into the filtered water, but at 0.75 ppm, be, the measured level was much lower than what we had found. And xylenes were found at 0.55 ppb. In addition, the lab report listed a third volatile chemical, toluene, at 0.21 ppb. Now apparently this is another chemical used in RO memory manufacturing processes. Good news is that even the strictest health guideline for toluene in water is at 24 ppb. So way above what had been detected. 
the SGS only tested for dichloromethane and found it at 0.5 ppb in the filtered water. So again, at a much lower concentration than what we had originally found. The lower dichloromethane concentration might have to do with the fact that our water drop A1 unit hadn't been used for quite some time before this new round of testing. And so it needed to flush two to three times beforehand. So we assumed that most of the dichloromethane had been flushed out of the system by then. Still seeing these results was great because it kind of confirmed our own findings and put our minds at ease because we hadn't spread any false information in our first video. And aside from testing our A1 unit that we had returned to WaterDrop, the company also said that they've made several dozen modifications to the A1 model in general in order to resolve the leaching issue. Obviously, we asked for specifics, but they replied that due to confidentiality rules, they were unable to disclose any details. What they said, however, was that there had never been a chemical sanitizer in the system. So our previous water drop contact was wrong about that. Still, this wasn't really the answer we were hoping for, but WaterDrop also said that they had randomly selected an updated A1 unit from their inventory for testing. And again, they've kindly shared the results with us. And although we can't really confirm their authenticity, we do believe that the results are accurate. Why? Because quite surprisingly, even with the updated water drop A1 version, the same three volatile chemicals were detected in the filtered water, just again at much lower concentrations than what we had originally found. Dichloromethane at 0.77 ppb, remember the strictest health guideline is set to 4 ppb. Xylene's at 0.57 ppb, so way, way below the strictest health guideline. And toluene at 0.22 ppb also way below the strictest health guideline. On top of that, WaterDrop has applied with their updated A1 model for an NSF standard 58 certification for material safety and structural integrity, which apparently they'll receive at the end of the year. And so with all of this new development, the updated WaterDrop A1 is back on the market. Now, what do we think about that? Well, all of this shouldn't have happened in the first place, but the fact that WaterDrop took the A1 off the market to do their own testing was the best possible move they could have made. We also appreciate the fact that they've shared all of their test results with us. What we don't like is that even with the updated A1 model, the chemical leaching still seems to persist, although it doesn't exceed even the strictest health guidelines any longer. Of course, in the end, you need to decide for yourself if you would like to give the updated WaterDrop A1 a try. From our perspective, as long as there are other good countertop RO systems out there that show no signs of chemical leaching in our lab testing, we prefer using one of those. But leaching aside, the Water Drop A1 definitely is a really cool product, and we're planning to test the new and updated version ourselves at some point and provide a full review, which is what we had originally intended. All right, before I end this video, I want to talk about all the other water filters we've tested since our first Water Drop A1 video came out, because we've been very busy. We tested 11 water filter pitchers, nine other countertop reverse osmosis systems, 11 under sink ROs and seven gravity water filters. And what I can say is based on our lab data, chemical leaching seems to be much more common with water filters than we had anticipated. I mean, sometimes the leaching is not really problematic. For example, when a water filter leaches tiny amounts of iron or zinc, but we also found more water filters that again, based on our lab testing, apparently leached potentially harmful chemicals into our water. And in several cases, even at levels that exceeded public health guidelines. Now, on the upside, there also exist plenty of water filters that don't seem to leach any chemicals into the water they treat, which is great, of course. Leaching or not, you can find all the water filters we've tested up to this point together with their lab reports in our Google Sheets, which I'll link in the video description. Now, we usually use these sheets for our big water filter comparison videos, and so they contain all of our lab data. Again, so far we've tested 21 reverse osmosis systems, 11 water filter pitchers, seven gravity water filters, and there will be plenty of other filters and filter types following. By the way, the reason I'm not going through all the water filters one by one in this video is because I'd like to keep things short for a change and there'd be way too much data to cover, but let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in a video like that. Also, in case you go and check out one of our sheets, please keep in mind the following three things. One, we usually don't repeat any of the lab testing to confirm our findings. So while we were right with what we said about the old water drop A1 version, leaching dichloromethane and xylenes, we can't guarantee that any of our other lab results are indeed accurate. And the reason why we're not repeating our lab testing is simply because it would be way too expensive. Two, we also need to consider that even with all of the lab testing we do, we can't test for every single chemical out there. So maybe some water filters that we deem safe actually leach stuff, but we're just not aware of it. And three, for every leached chemical, we always apply the strictest health guideline we can find, which is usually defined by the California Office of Environmental Health Hazard Assessment. But there also exist other guidelines, which are often much more lenient. So maybe we need to ask ourselves, at what point are we taking things too far with our lab testing? Maybe a water filter is good enough, even if it leaches a certain substance. In other words, when are we talking about a realistic threat 
and why not? I guess this is really hard to answer. It depends a lot on how much of the affected water you consume and for how long, how close we are to exceeding said health guidelines and how strict those guidelines are, how dangerous the leached chemicals can be, and how much research exists on the contaminant. So plenty of factors and a lot of questions that remain unanswered. But one thing is for certain, we here on our channel will always prefer a water filter that showed no sign of harmful chemical leaching over one that did. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe if you want more content like this and feel free to share your thoughts and ask questions. Until next time.